Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Tuesday, June 2nd, and I'm here for my weekly stitching update. I have a good amount to show today, so let's get right to it. Um, I have a couple new things. Uh, I got was I was contacted by Elizabeth, and she found a um, a pattern in a magazine that she just thought I would like and sent it to me. So this is Winter Dream or Fairy Winter Dream, and it's by Nora Corbett. So I thought that was really pretty. So thank you for that. Um, lots of bling, but it's it's a Nora Corbett, so it is on the smaller side compared to a Mirabilia. And I thought my daughter would like it because she is. She likes her her birthday's in December, so she's uh she likes all things winter and snow because of that. Not that we see a lot of that around here <laughs> in Southern California. Um and the other thing I actually bought was Joan Elliott's Edwardian Lady, which is my favorite Joan Elliott design. I don't care I mean a lot of them are pretty, but I don't care to stitch most of them. Um this one I love. So I was thinking, it was out of stock before when I was, so it couldn't have, it couldn't be my first Joan Elliott start. I had, I did, still did the May Day celebration one that I'll show here in a little bit. Um, but I, when it came back in stock, I snapped it up and I had to make a purchase for something else anyways. So I just threw this in my cart too, along with um, three beads that it called for. And I had a Krynik in here too. That was um, out of stock, so I'm still waiting on that. But this may get started for Joan Elliott July if I can get the right fabric. This background reminds me of Fairy Dreams, I think. It's a fabric flare fabric, and so I'm I'm really strongly considering getting that. I tend to reg I tend to typically find the cheapest fabric option I can I can find that will look good with the pattern but I really like how that looks and it brings out all the different colors in in the lady without overpowering any of them so I really like that so it's probably what I'm gonna do so I I found some on Stitchery Express that is 32 count the size I need but I don't see very much else on that site that I want to buy so I'm a little torn if I should just get that and or like figure out something else to buy, find another fabric that I can use for another project I, that I have in the wings um, to make shipping worthwhile. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. <clears throat> um, oh yes, and this stuff, I received the supplies from the Fat Quarter Shop for the new Prim Stitch Club, which is gonna start in July. And it's, this time I'm gonna be <clears throat> stitching along with everybody else. I won't get the pattern early, I'm get, getting, Receive the pattern at the same time everybody else does, which I believe starts July 1st and will be every first for a month, um, this July through next June. And their called for fabric is 25 count prim uh, Lugana. It's a huge piece and I think <clears throat> it's uh, 27 by 36. So you could do this all 12 blocks on the same piece or you can cut it up and do them individually and this gives you enough to do that. Um, I think if you want to do it the individual way, it'll give you a one and a half inch margin around the block um, if you're stitching it over two with one piece. If you like a bigger margin than that, you could buy two pieces. Um, I will probably, again, be stitching mine over one, so I'll have plenty of fabric, um, but I, I am going to do them individually, so I'll need the margins for that. Um, the other thing I'm thinking of doing is including some specialty stitches in the piece because they have shown part one and if I can find me I'll pop in a picture here of what part one looks like because they have released that um, as kind of a teaser to get you into them see what the style is I guess it doesn't have the word June or July I guess that one would be for July it doesn't have the word July in it but I'm guessing they'll be thematic for the, the month so it's probably going to be another one where I'll rotate it out in a, in a frame or something. And I, w I had some ideas already on this one of ways that I could alter the pattern just a little bit to do some specialty stitches instead of the cross stitches and make it a little bit fun. So that's probably what I'll do in each one. I'll try to pick one or two specialty stitches to replace some of the cross stitches. So you can be looking for that. And, um, and then the, the Ori floss that they had 
came with it. And this is their kit, their pack. Really pretty colors. And these are, this is six-stranded embroidery floss, just like DMC. There's like 18, 18 yards on each spool. So it's like each one is worth two skeins of DMC. So there's a good amount of thread here. And then I can do it over one or, or over two because you just pull however many strands you want, either one or two. Um, so that's perfect. I'm excited to try those. And so I'll just be using those, those called four threads. They're not variegated, they're just plain. So I'm pretty sure there'll be a DMC conversion. If you don't want to buy this, you can just do the DMC. Um, I think that's all the things I got this week. So now let's talk about what I did. Um, my, I finished the feel, Feels Like Home sell. It last part released on Friday. So here's my finish of that. And this is the same 25 count Lugana, only this is in the color Cloud, which is a nice crisp white. And I use their called for classic Colorworks threads. And this last part was the roses. And I think they turned out really nice. Um, there seems to be more of a gap in here that I, than I was expecting, but it's okay. I'm pretty sure I counted right. Um, one thing I noticed is the, there's four colors of pink and the darkest section of sea shelly is very close to the strawberry parfait. And so I had a section in here, um, that I ended up ripping out and restitching it in a lighter shade of sea shelly just so that it would show up better. So I have a feeling the DMC conversion might actually be a little more straightforward in this one to show the crisp um, color changes between the four colors. Um, since the variegated floss, you know, goes from dark to light, sometimes when they overlap, it doesn't quite do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> but other than that, it, I think it turned out pretty fun. And I'm done with that. So I actually saw in my email this past week from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, they had a tutorial listed for how to turn a piece, a finished cross stitch into a little like zipper pouch or something. And so I'll definitely take a look at that and see if that's what I wanna do. Or I'll make it just a panel on a tote bag or project bag or put, I, I'm also tempted to, to just buy an under the bed box and start filling it up. And yeah. We'll see, because <laughs> I have a, a few too many finishes now. But that's fun. Got that one done. Feels good. This is probably one that I probably should have not said yes to, because it turned out to be a little bit more stitching than I originally expected. Um, but I think the next one, the Prim Stitch Club, will be um, less of a time commitment than this one will, because it's a fairly small block and you have the whole month to do it. These ones had decent sized chunks for every week. So it was definitely a lot more stitching. Um, but I'm glad it's done and it turned out cute. So I also finished School Day Sampler. I didn't think I was gonna get this one done because I really wasn't working on it all that much, but I managed to pull it out. Had one last chance to pull it out last night while we were watching Deadliest Catch and I got it finished. So I don't think I need anything behind it. Well, maybe I do. And here it is finished. So pretty happy with that. I got these purple and pink flowers finished last night and now it's complete. So now I can frame all the teacher gifts and I'll bring them back and show you all together when they're ready. And I think I picked out some cute frames that match the the styles of the pieces. So this is on 18 count beige Ada and my daughter picked the colors. She worked on the head of the bird, a little bit of the border on the S and most of the glue bottle. And then the rest I did. <laughs> so that turned out pretty cute. And let's see, I finished my, um, one of my customer pieces. So I, I'm done with that one, and but I started another one. So I do have some customer stitching that I'll be doing every morning, at least all the weekday mornings, but um, that I'll work on here and there to get that progressed along nicely. Let's see, oh yeah. 
I was also able to work on my temperature tree again because I didn't get to it last week. So on Sunday, I pulled it out and got cut up on all my leaves. So this is my temperature tree and I'm now cut up with almost entirely of the month of May because I worked on it on Sunday so I didn't have the last final temperature yet. So here it is now. I think it's turning out pretty cute. It's got, this is 28 count light blue, even weave one over one. And we had a nice cool patch. This little leaf is 68, a high of 68. And then these down here were a high of 95. <laughs> so we're, we're still kind of going back and forth in whether the, whether we want to be spring or summer around here. So that's, it's actually kind of nice. It's not like blazing hot all the time. So it's actually fairly cool this week also. Um, a little warmer and humid because there's clouds out, but it's supposed to cool down and maybe even rain on Friday. So who knows? So this is coming along really nicely. This next week, I'll need to do the June branch so that I can get those done. So I'll probably need to set aside a little bit more time on it this week to work on the branch as well. And... But that's nice to get caught up and it didn't take very long to do two weeks worth of leaves. I also didn't work on this this month but or this week, but it is no farther along than the most recent release. So I'll go ahead and just share it rather than putting in a clip. Here's my Bloomtopia stitch along by the Fat Quarter Shop. This is the mystery, not really mystery, it's not a mystery stitch along, it's a charity stitch along for uh, a donation to Make-A-Wish. You get the pattern for free. So this was block nine that released on the first, on yesterday. So this is all caught up um, and I let myself lose my lead. I had been ahead. Um, this is Ivory, 28 count Ivory Lugana, one over one. My called for threads, um, not called for threads, they're threads I pulled from my stash. Um, I allowed myself to lose my lead while I was working on the feels like home sal, but now I'll try to get caught up again to do like a set a part a week. There's two more parts down here, 10 and 11 or 11, 10 and 11. I don't know which direction they go. They don't always go like, yeah, anyways, they're not like you would read. They're kind of popped around all over the place sometimes. And the border is number is release number 12. So this will be done. I think the last that last part releases July 15th. So I wanna to try to get this finished before July, if possible, so that I can only have one outstanding, you know, stitch along type thing when the Prim Stitch Club starts in July. So I can work on one week, this week I'll work on one part, next week I'll work on the next part, and then I'll have two weeks to finish the border. So I think I can do it. <laughs> so that'll be good. So that will come back out again this week. And how I have been doing all of these is I'll work for at least one length of floss on my customer piece in the morning. And then I'll work on my, st my stitch along piece for however long I feel is necessary. Um, with something with these parts, these Bloomtopia parts are nice and cute and small, so they don't take that long. So I could maybe give it one or two days and it'll be done. Um, and any extra days in the week that that little time slot right there would be like my temperature tree maybe. Um, and then the rest of my time that day will be on my focus piece for that day. So um, that's kind of my plan. Customer stitching, stitch along, focus piece. And this, this month I'm gonna go back to the Enchanted Stitching Challenges group on Facebook and to help me pick my focus pieces and I'm excited to do that again. It's it's fun to to try to fit my pieces in with the prompts and it's different than I had originally planned my week to be by a little bit and so but that's kind of fun to be to look at the prompts and be like, "Oh, well I guess this piece won't fit, but I know this one will." And you know, it, and I love all my pieces, so it's fun to just kind of play around like that once in a while. And so, let's see. Let's consult my planner to see what I did this week. So, Last time I talked to you, I was just about to start Three Sisters, 
not start, but work on Three Sisters by Golden Kite. That's what this one looks like. And I just had two printouts because one of them was a better quality. So I'm working on this girl right here and a little bit in the background. And this is on 18 count white Ada and it's enormous. And I noticed that I found myself not wanting to pull it out as frequently as another piece would have been pulled out because it's so big. Um, I felt like if I had a, just a few minutes and I knew I only had a few minutes, I picked something else instead. I either worked on a small stitch along project or just played on my phone or did something else because I didn't want to get this huge thing out and not be able to just easily set it down and come back and pick it up later like I can some other projects. I can't just rest it on the arm of my chair and get up and leave. It covers my chair and my lap and whatnot. It's huge. <laughs> so I've always felt like it had to have a decent amount of time to sit down and get it out or it wouldn't be worthwhile to get it out, do a couple stitches and roll it all back up. So for that reason, I think that's why some of these big pieces are so daunting and slow to get worked on is because they're not as flexible um, to just pull in and out. And I suppose if I had it on a Q-snap and all the XX fabric was all tucked in, it would probably be easier to pull in and out. But that's not how I work. And I wouldn't like the process of stitching. So it is what it is. And I will hopefully keep chipping away at this as, as I have time. I do like it when I get it out. I just feel like I avoid getting it out sometimes because it's just so big. So this is what it looked like last time. And this is what it looks like now. Hopefully you can see some sort of difference. It's not, I think I did a little over 200 stitches because I did about a hundred something each day. There were a few parked threads in this block and I finished those parked threads. There's more along here, but I focused on one block and got all those stitched in. So there's a few extra things along there. And then in her, I picked one color and did one color. So there's a dark, a darker red, it's kind of around in her face area that I worked on to give her a little bit more dimension. Ideally, I only worked on her for two days because it did take a full day to get it up, uploaded into Pattern Keeper. So ideally, I would spend enough time on her in one rotation to get at least one dark color and one light color to try to get more shading and what not completed. Because it would have been nice to get, I finished one dark color, it'd be nice to get it, pick one of these lighter colors, you know, and maybe fill in the lighter shades a little bit more too. So, but that's okay. I had another start to get to. <laughs> so this one got two days of stitching, not a ton of progress on either day, but a little bit and it's better than nothing. So there you go. I do like this one and it'll be fun now that Pattern Keeper is working on it. Um, I think when I do get it out, I will be more successful and have more progress to show each time. So that's always good. Then I think the next thing was my start, which is what I've been working on ever since. So I started my first Joan Elliott, which is called Mayday Celebration <clears throat> in this magazine. This is Cross Stitch Gold, July, 2010. And it's, well here, the title is made a cheer of the article. This says springtime merriment. And then up at the top, it says made a celebration. I discovered, um, somebody told me um, in the comments that Joan Elliott just released this as a free design on in her Facebook group. So if you, you have to follow the rules and answer the questions and be a good, you know, Joan Elliott lover if you wanna enter that group. But if you do, this is a free pattern now on her Facebook group. So it's not sold in her shop, but you can get it that way. So if you really love this, that's a nice way to get it. And I actually went in and downloaded it just to make sure um, if I had any trouble with any of the backstitching or with the way the pages, the chart pages are cut in the magazine, I could always just print out my own and figure it out if I had, I needed to, if I wanted to back up. 
So, so far I'm doing fine with the magazine copy, um, but I've got that digital one if I need it. So <clears throat> that's fun because I know there were a couple of you that really liked this design. So I have started this and I worked on it, I guess Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then I started, I looked at the, um, when did I look at them? Sun I think I worked, looked at them on Monday, yesterday. I looked at the Enchanted Stitching Challenges group to see what the prompts were and decided this one would fit one of the prompts. <clears throat> so I'd be able to get another um, 250 stitches. And I got about 200 done yesterday. So this morning I put in the last 50. Even though I don't normally stitch on my normal, my focus pieces in the morning, I wanted to get all the whole prompt done before I showed you so that I wouldn't have to come back next week just to update you on 50 stitches. That would be a little sad. I'm doing this in my own conversion of fancy flosses, so I'm not doing all the shading that is charted, but I am loving it. This is how, where I got to. And that's that's pretty accurate for the for the fabric. It's nice a nice uh yeah, that's pretty good. It's a nice summery sky blue. <clears throat> Anyways. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to get the right color, but <clears throat> you can see this is how far I got. And this top part is all the way done. I backstitched the basket and did all of this. And these ribbons do not have backstitching. So they're all complete. Um, so from here up is done. There's more of these little, like, sprigs of flowers and leaves sprinkled throughout here so even where there's lots of um ribbons there's still a few more of those to do and there's some more ribbons over here um i did this morning i did these three ribbons one length of cut of floss in each of those colors and um that was my 250 stitches so that's what i did post even we were using the hashtag Joan in May Sal because I started this in May and it was a oh oh yeah on her Facebook group it's called Mayday Merriment that's why I was talking about all the titles Mayday Merriment so I may call it that um but we there's so many people that decided they wanted to stitch stitch or start a Joan Elliott um with me on the 29th that we made a hashtag Joan in May Sal and a lot of people started so you can go check out that hashtag and see everybody starts lots of different variety of designs so it's really fun to see <clears throat> i got um so these are all various variegated threads this color was giving me a hard time i had a nice yellow that when you look at all the floss it looked really nice together but when i was starting to when i, I got a whole length of it stitched in i'm just like it's too bright it was just like it, it just popped way too much off of the page. And so I ripped it out and I found this one. It's, it's like a peachy color, summer sorbet. And I kind of feel like it's popping out too much too, but this pink also pops out quite amazingly. And this one, the pink also pops, so I think it's fine. I did this one instead of... Um... This is instead of this girl, because the the more light blue, I figured, would blend in with my fabric. So this girl and this ribbon needed to be something other than light blue, because I knew, and I, I tested a few light blues to see, well, maybe I should just try a light blue and see if it'll work. And most of them, as soon as you unroll this thread and lay it on the fabric, it just disappears. Um, it looks maybe okay when it's bobbinated, but... <clears throat> so... I think I'll keep going with this, and it does look slightly different um, than you're seeing. It looks a little lighter, a little lighter than than you're seeing. But anyways, I'll keep going with this. I had some feedback on Instagram. They say they like the peach, so I'm gonna keep going with it. Once I get the girl's hair in, I think it will help balance the colors a little bit more too, and their skin. So yeah, I'll reserve my judgment um, until I get a little bit more done. I don't think I'll put any more peach in until I get more of the the ladies started. 
to see if that's for sure going to happen um, that way. But I think it might. I think it's I think it's going to be fine. I think that'll show up better than um, than a light blue would because of the fabric choice. Oh yeah, and this is 32 count Spring Morning Jobelin by Color and Cotton. It is so pretty. It's very smooth. Um, very smooth fabric. I love it. I don't know if if it's blocking. I don't know how much it can focus. But anyways, it's so smooth and pretty that I was really tempted to do one over one skin because all of these girls' faces are really small and I figured it wouldn't matter. There are some with like long arms and stuff. I'm like, that is a lot of skin on some of them. But then the more I looked at it, there were some spaces on the, the skin areas where they were not super tight to the back stitching. There were some stitches sticking out from underneath the back stitching. And so I think that's maybe partly why it looked a little chunky to me. So I'm gonna just refine the back stitching areas with fractional stitches and um, do two over two. So, cause I'm really enjoying how fast this is going. And I think if I stopped and did one over one, it would slow me down to a screeching halt. And it would no longer be quite as fun because I'm enjoying that it's so small. This is a fat eighth. So it's really tiny compared to a Mirabilia and it's stitching up really fast because of the variegated threads, not having to do three different colors of each, three different shades of each color. Um, it's nice to just have one and just keep going. So it, it is a nice quick stitch, so I don't wanna ruin it <laughs> by trying one over one. And I think if I just fix, add more fractionals, it'll be fine. So that's my plan on that one. So I think that's all the stitching that I've done that I can show you from this past week. So now we will move into June. In the month of June, um, I'm planning to start Summer Queen probably on the 12th, which is a Mirabilia. Um, Terry Lee Crafts has that started and she'll probably work on it with me on the 12th and probably the following weekend. Um, and Rolanda, Duick, Stitching Addict, she will, she's considering starting it as well with me. So if anybody wants to start Summer Queen by Mirabilia on the 12th, um, feel free, jump right in. I'm reserving the quote unquote first day of summer, um, summer solstice. It's on June 20th. I'm going to start my summer cross kit that day. <clears throat> so, and then the weekend of the 19th through the 21st is a full coverage fanatics um, I'm hearing people talking. <clears throat> the weekend of the 19th through the 21st is a full coverage fanatics um, themed weekend with for um, like a Shakespeare thing, a Shakespeare theme, Midsummer Nights stitch along. So I'm going to do a stitching shelf because it's one of my full coverage fanatics Germany, you know, around the world pieces. And that has a whole bunch of books on it. And Shakespeare has things that he wrote. So maybe one of those books is a Shakespeare book. <laughs> um, and so I'll be working on a, stitch, a stitching shelf probably Friday and Sunday <clears throat> because Saturday I want to start the summer cross. So I'll have to kind of fit those in because it's all the same month um, or the same weekend. <clears throat> Other than that, I also have Empress Eugenie, which is another full coverage piece that I'll be working on for Germany for the Around the World Sal. I don't know when I'll be working on it yet, but it's one that I hope to get to sometime this month, as well as all six family pieces. So, um, my niece loved her, her present that I gave her on Saturday and her letter H fairy. Some of my other nieces have discovered my FlossTube channel, so um, I will probably not be sharing those, any more of those, until I gift them. So I will be maybe making clips along the way. Um, so those will now be secret, secret stitches. But anyways, what I'm planning to do this week, I did the Mayday Merriment Joan Elliott already for, folk, for Enchanted Stitching, so that... Um, that prompt is complete. So there's three more three more prompts for that one that I have. One of them is touch down to work on something 
that I'm making for a child, um, intended as a gift for a child, or has a child in it. This doesn't have a child in it, but I'm making it for my son, who is technically still a child. He's almost a teenager, but he's not quite. <laughs> so he's currently still a child, and I'm making this for him. So and this is one I wanted to work on this, this week. Today, actually, is the day I should be working on it. So since I finished May Day Celebration, it's perfect to work on this today. So this is my starting point on this one. I finished all the white already, and I still have some light gray to finish in the holes in the pants and shirt. And this is on 28 count light blue even weave by MCG Textiles. And yeah, I kind of want to fill more of this stuff in, but I do want to fill in the, the gray. So we'll see what I do. I'll do at least 250 stitches, maybe 500 if I have, I have time now, um, like six more days. So I could, I could spend two days on each thing. So we'll see. I'll get at least 250 stitches on this. Probably fill in the holes and maybe start in on some of the gray or the leg colors or something. We shall see. The May Day celebration was something... I forget what that prompt was for. Oh, that one was for one... Because the, the theme for um, for June is Monsters, Inc. They, they do each of the... Each month, the prompts are centered around a movie, a Disney movie. And so this, this month is Monsters, Inc. And they were saying, because some of the monsters in Metropolis only have one eye, stitch on something that has a character with only one eye, or where the characters in the piece, you can only see one eye. So I use this one because all five of those girls dancing, you can only see one eye. They all have a somewhat profile face to show only one eye. So I'm like, perfect. <laughs> so that was for that one um and then I also thought one of them was what would you put on your door um because all the kids in the human world have a like a bedroom door and the monsters go in to try to scare them to fuel metropolis and so I thought I would put a butterfly on my door so um I thought I'd pull this one out and get another uh chunk of stitching done on my new Mill Hill kit that I started last week and here's where I'm at to start and so probably fill in um, more of the orange and maybe maybe hopefully get in start in on some of the flowers we'll see so again I'll do at least 250 stitches but I'll probably spend two days on it so we'll see how far I get and then um, my last one I decided I was planning on working on my Simpsons piece this week, um, but it really didn't fit any of the prompts properly. This this last prompt was a color one where you worked on who do you like better, Mike or Scully? And if you if you chose Mike, you could work on green. If you chose Scully, you could work on blue or purple. So technically, I could have chosen the Simpsons piece and picked one of those colors to work on, but none of those colors were where I was planning to work on. I was going to do some yellow in her, in Marge's arm, or like outlining stitches, which would be black or gray. Um, there are blue and green in that piece, but I wasn't really planning on going to those sections. So I figured, well, I'll hope that there'll be a prompt for that one at least next week, maybe, and I can pull that one out later. Um, so I was looking back through some of the things I've started this year, that are more recent starts that needed more love and I thought of this one. Um, my owl family. So this one I'm working in the dad's arm which is blue so that one would work. Um, technically I could even work on his his arm because it's green but no that would work. I chose Scully so I have to work on blue or purple. So I could do blue if I go up his eye I could do some of that purple technically Probably won't make it that far, but I'll probably will just work on blue and I may, I'm not sure yet. Since I'm not working on these colors, I won't do this little guy yet, but I'll work on his rest of his wing and will probably work his way up, up the eye so I can start working on the top of the dad because he's actually the tallest point in the, in the pattern. I am doing the no background version. This is by Anya Kai. If you can read that there. It's the Heaven and Earth Designs. 
And I got the no background version because I'm going to stitch it on this picture, picture this plus glacier by um, 20 in 28 count. It's yeah, it's hard to, it's more like that. But yeah, um, this is my starting point. So there's that tiny little stitches. <clears throat> it's uh, a nice tealy color. Not really green, not really blue. It's right in the middle. So it's going to be pretty big, <laughs> but I'm happy with that. So that's where I'm starting and I will um, hopefully get a decent amount done on that. Again, the, well, these are, these are full cross, one over one. So I'll do at least, again, 250 stitches or two days. Well, yeah, I'll most likely do two days on each of these pro three projects. So I'll do at least 250, but I'll keep counting and see how far I get. So I think that's everything. Yeah, I'll do that later. <laughs> um, oop, time for lunch again. Um, got a little bit of a late start because there were the gardeners outside making a lot of noise, so I had to wait. Um, so I will go now and get lunch for my, for my family and hopefully have a nice relaxing afternoon. And I hope you are enjoying your stitching. Stay safe and be kind and happy stitching.